Well, how's everybody doing this lovely, wonderful day? I hope everybody is doing just fine. I know that God has been blessing you all the time because we serve a God that's full of blessings, that's full of goodness, that's full of love, that's full of kindness, that's full of grace. Thank you, God. I'm giving you all praise and honor right now, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, I have to lift you up, Heavenly Father, because you are the almighty God. You are the awesome God. You are the great God. There's no other God like you. You are the excellent God. I just want to thank you, God, for accepting me into your family through your son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, I, Jesus, I just want to thank you for the sacrifice you made for the shedding of your blood. You came down here and walked this earth to shed your blood for the forgiveness of sin. I thank you for forgiving me of my sins, Heavenly Father. I thank you for forgiving me of my sins, Jesus Christ. I just thank you so much for the sacrifice you made. Hey, Jesus, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you, God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit, for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, that these believers must know that you live inside of them through the Spirit that now dwells in them. Bless that wonderful name. I want to thank you for your for your holy words, Heavenly Father. I want to thank you for the new covenant. I want to thank you for the new testament so that we can spend eternity with you, God. I want to thank you for that. All that is a blessing from God. Not only do God take care of your spiritual life, he take care of your mental life. He take care of your physical life. He take care of your financial life. God take care of all your needs. All your needs. I need you to know that. I need you to know that. But this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice. Oh, hear me again. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. Okay? Uh, like I was saying about Jesus. Jesus forgiving us. Jesus died on the cross so we can have our sins forgiven. So then we can have our sins forgiven. That means so that sin will not be held against us. We serve a forgiving God. We serve a forgiving God. He made a way for us so that our sins can be forgiven. So that our sins can be forgiven. In return, he wants you to forgive others. He said, forgive others that do wrongs to you. He wants you to be forgiving. He wants you to be forgiving. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. He wants you to be forgiving. So today I have a message that's titled, Be Forgiving. It's titled, Be Forgiving. Be Forgiving. That means forgiving others for the wrong that they had done to you or for the trespasses they had done. Just like God and Jesus have forgave us. We got to work on and live in a lifestyle of forgiving others. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. So today he say, be forgiving. Today he say, be forgiving. So I want to bless that wonderful name, Jesus. And you know, I'm always coming from the Christian perspective. I'm always coming from the Christian perspective because we believe and follow Jesus Christ. We will be obedience to Jesus Christ. We will be obedience to the word of God. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. But first, I want to give you an idea of what forgive is. Forgive is to stop feeling angry. It's not forgiving others. It's just to forgive in your heart. This is just the way you forgive in your heart. Because in your heart, you might hold these things. So forgive is to stop feeling angry. You got to stop feeling angry. If you don't stop feeling angry, you cannot forgive nobody. You cannot forgive one another. Then to forgive is to stop feeling bitterness. You can't have bitterness in you. So you got to be released from your bitterness. So 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 when you really forgive, you be released from your bitterness. When the bitterness, but first, forgiveness starts inside of you. So you got bitterness in there. Then you got holding grudges against someone. You got to start all that in there. But the truth to the fact, what you need to understand is that forgiveness starts inside of you. It starts inside of you. So there's things in you, that's that wonderful name, that you got to take to God and ask him to help you get over it through the power of his Holy Spirit. So you got to get over that anger, that bitterness, them grudges. You got to let them go. 
But only know one way. Only know one way that you can let it go. You got to turn it over to God. You got to turn it over to God. You got to release it. You got to release it out of you. You got to release that bitterness out of you. You got to release that hatred out of you. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. You got to release that bitterness out of you. You got to release that grudges out of you. So you got to turn it over to God so that God can work in your life. Through the power of his Holy Spirit that now dwells in you so we can clean that up. See, when you can clean that up, and then you can be a forgiving person. But you can't do it by yourself. You got to have faith in Jesus. You got to have faith in the Holy Spirit. You got to have faith in God's word in order for forgiveness to work in your life. Because forgive starts with inside of you. It starts inside of you. So you got to get rid of that bitterness. You got to get rid of that anger. You got to get rid of that grudges. You got to get rid of that hatred in order to forgive others. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. That's where forgive starts. That's the word forgive. That's where the word forgive starts. See, forgive is to stop feeling angry. That's personally talking about you to stop, to stop having bitterness. To stop holding grudges. To stop hating. You know, all that you got to be delivered from. See, when you are born again in Jesus Christ, he's working on you to develop this type of heart inside of you so that you don't hold on to these evil things. Because I want you to know one thing. Sin or evil have no dominion over you. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. When you can accept that in your life, and then that bitterness and everything else will start running out. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. And then I want to go on to forgive. So now I want to talk about to forgive. We did forgive. Now let's talk about to forgive. To forgive is to release. Is to release someone from the mistreating they have done to you. To you. <clears throat> is to release someone from the mistreating that they have done for you. That's what forgiveness is. You don't hold nothing against nobody anymore. You let it go. When you forgive somebody, you let it go. You honestly, you let it go. You let it go. So you releasing them from what they done to you and you telling them, I'm all right with you now. Me and you cool again, you understand? Me and you, it's, it's, it's buddies again. We're friends. We can associate with one another. We can socialize with one another. Why? Because I forgave you. So I release you from whatever you had done to me. I don't hold it against you anymore. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. I don't hold it against you anymore. See, God made it clear. He wants us to forgive others. God made it clear. He wants us to forgive others. So are we going to do the will of God? Are you going to do the will of God? In order to do this part of the will of God is to forgive others. It's not even about you except releasing it out you, but it's about the other person. See, when you forgive someone, you can win them in to maybe want to become a Christian. When you forgive someone, people like people that's able to forgive them for the wrongs they've done and not hold things against them. Bless that wonderful name. You are actually being a light to this world. When you're forgiving someone, you're not, you are not the darkness. You are the light to the world. And, uh, and you know, you can forgive someone and that don't mean that they're going to accept your forgiveness. Even though you released them from it. Bless that wonderful name. It's not about whether they accept it. It's just a matter of you doing it. If that's all it is, it's a matter of you doing it. So walk around the day and you got something against somebody, work on getting it out your heart and go over and forgive them. Don't hold it against them. Don't hold it against them. Don't hold it against them. That's what forgiveness is. That's what forgiveness is all about. It sets you free. It sets you free. When you can really forgive somebody from your heart, 
it sets you free from anger and bitterness. It sets you free in the name of Jesus. But to, but to forgive someone, you must release the anger. I've already spoke on this. But to forgive someone, you must release the anger, the bitterness, or grudges, or hatred you have toward them in your heart. You got to let it go in order to forgive someone. Let's see. See, see, see. That's what real forgiveness is all about. You got to let something go. See, God don't hold nothing against us. Because he forgave us. Because he forgave us. He don't hold nothing against us. Nothing. He don't hold our sins against us. Because he forgave us of, of our sins through his son, Jesus Christ. So he don't hold sin against us. You understand? He's not angry with us. He's not bitter with us. You understand? He's loving and he's kind with us. Because he forgave us. You understand? Because he forgave us. With the help, I want you to understand this, with the help of the Holy Spirit that now lives in you, with the help of the Holy Spirit that now lives in you, you will be able to release that anger. See, see, I didn't say that you do it by yourself. I didn't say that. You can't do it by yourself. But with the help, of the Holy Spirit, you can release anger. You can release bitterness. You can release grudges. You can release hatred that is in your heart. <clears throat> Through the help of the Holy Spirit. Through the help of the Holy Spirit, you can let all that go. And you can truthfully and fully Forgive a person. You can truthfully and fully forgive a person from your heart. A lot of people do a lot of forgiving with their mouth. But they still have that bitterness and anger in their heart. So in reality, they gave out verbal forgiveness, but they never gave the true uh, forgiveness. And that's not to hold grudges against nobody. That's not to be bitter with nobody. That's not to be angry with nobody. See, that's what real forgiveness is all about. That's what it's really all about. It's more than just say, uh, I forgive you for what you've done. But at the same time, you're still mad at them. You're still frustrated with them. You're still angry at them. You're still disliking them. You still want nothing to do with them. And if you're laying like that, I need you to know that you really haven't forgave them. All you gave was a verbal forgiveness. All you gave is a verbal forgiveness. But God wants you to be able to give a heart forgiveness. He wants you to be able to give from your heart. He don't want you to forgive and still be holding something against nobody. That's not God's forgiveness. God's forgiveness is you forgive and you don't hold nothing against nobody. You let it go in the name of Jesus. You don't hold nothing against them. You're not bitter about them or anything. You understand? That's what true forgiveness is. And you know, that's why we got to be forgiving. But in order to be forgiving, you got to understand what true forgiveness is in the name of Jesus. See, I came to learn with faith in the Holy Spirit. If you put your faith in the Holy Spirit, you can be released from anger. You can be released from anger and grudges. You know, because I walked and worked in my life. But you also must be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Now that's another story. Now, the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. And the Holy Spirit is going to always tell you something good. And the Holy Spirit is going to tell you what to do and what not to do. On how to forgive. Now, if you be obedient to the Holy Spirit. And you do it the way that the Holy Spirit tell you to do it. You're going to be alright. You're going to be alright. But the thing is, you got to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Because I want you to know that the Holy Spirit talks to you. 
The Holy Spirit talks to you. The Holy Spirit gives you direction. The Holy Spirit tells you what to do. The Holy Spirit tells you how to do it. The Holy Spirit do it all. But right now, the first thing the Holy Spirit is telling you, you got to get rid of that bitterness. And the Holy Spirit is telling you, I'm here to help you to get over it. I'm here to help you to get over your anger. I'm here to help you get over your frustration, your grudges, your hatred. That's what the Holy Spirit is there for. It's your helper. We call it the comforter. We call it the comforter. Comforter slice helper. You understand? Because that's what it is to you. It, it's there to comfort you and to encourage you and to help you. That's why it's your comforter. That's what a, a person do when they comfort someone. They encouraging them. They being good to them. You understand? They helping them. They aid them wherever where, where, wherever they need help. At. That's what the Holy Spirit do. And so the Holy Spirit will help you get over bitterness. It will help you get over anger. It will help you get over grudges in the name of Jesus. But the touch is, in order for it to work, you must be obedient to the Holy Spirit. You must be obedient to the Holy Spirit if you want the Holy Spirit to work in your life. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. You must trust and obey God and Jesus always. You must trust and obey God and Jesus always. If you want to be a forgiving person. If you want to be a forgiving person, you must trust and obey God always. Always fellowship with God. Always fellowship with God and Jesus. You know, keep them on your mind. Keep them in your heart. Converse with them. Have a conversation with them from time to time. You ain't always got to go to them for a request. Sometimes you can just give them praise. Sometimes you can just speak about some things that might be bothering you and you can take it to God, you know, and just talk to him about it, then let God work it out. Or you can just talk about God for about how how great you have made my life and the person that I am today. And, you know, you just communicate with him, just like you're hanging out buddy or something, you know. You can sit there, you can just talk to God and meditate on God and commune with God and fellowship with God, you know. You can do that. You can do that with God. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. He made it possible through the spirit that now dwells in you. You can communicate with God. You can have a fellowship with God through his Holy Spirit. Bless that name, Jesus. But you must trust and obey God in Jesus always. Always fellowship with God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God's word. Hey, you got to fellowship with them. That means you got to hang out with them. That means you got to spend time with them. You got to spend time in the Word of God, you know. You want the Word of God to work in your life, you got to spend time in the Word of God. Because when you spend time in the Word of God, that means you're getting the Word of God in you. And when you're getting the Word of God in you and you're meditating on the Word of God, pretty soon the Word of God will start directing you. You understand? The same way, if you fellowship with God and you fellowship with Jesus and you spend time with them, you will find yourself in your life changing and transforming. And you will find yourself not liking things that you do. And you might still do it, but you don't like it. But that means that you've been cleaned up. That means he's taking it out of you. That means he's taking it out of you. I bet you some of you out there that didn't want to be a forgiving person. Right now you're looking at it and say, man, this dude out of his mind. He's talking about be forgiven. I ain't finna forgive that person for what that person done to me. I'm going to keep this. Ain't no way. That way that person dogged me out. I'm not forgiving that person. Yeah. That's the way of the world. But the way of God is, you got to be forgiving. He might have dogged me out. He might have mistreated me. <laughs> he might have did all kind of dirt to me. But you know what? With the help of the Holy Spirit, hear me, I'm not doing it by myself. With the help of the Holy Spirit and God's Word and Jesus Christ and God, today, <laughs> I'm thankful that I can forgive. But I want you to know, God get all the glory. <laughs> I want you to know, if it wasn't for God, I couldn't do it. If it wasn't for God, I couldn't do it. 
because sometimes inside of you, you still don't want to forgive, but God come down and he, he get to talking to you when you fellowshipping with God and he come down and he get to talking to you through his spirit and he get to showing you some things in your mind and then you turn around and say, yeah, I can't hold this against them. I'm going to forgive them for the wrong that they done me and bless your wonderful name. And when you do it, then you find your joy coming back in you. You find your love coming back in you. You find your peace coming back in you. You find your grace coming back in you. You find mercy back in you. You find compassion back in you. You find love back in you. Why? Because all that bitterness and that hatred and them grudges and that anger has been removed and now you're in the presence of the Lord because you fellowship with him. That's how deliverance works. Because you fellowship with them. You fellowship with them. And then you can be forgiving. And then you can be forgiving. For real. Not just a verbal forgive me. Not just no verbal I forgive you. But a hard one I forgive you. Because you hold nothing against them. And since you did it. Now you can have peace in your own life. You can have love in your own life. You can have joy in your own life. You can have comfort in your own life. You can have the goodness of God in your own life because you're not letting that hold you up no more. Unforgiveness is dangerous and detrimental to you. But I thank God for his son, Jesus Christ, for what he done on that cross by the shedding of his blood. I thank God for raising his son back up. I want you to know his son walked the earth and he was kicking it with his disciples. And then he ascended up to heaven. And then when he went to heaven, thank God he talked to the Father. And he promised to do what he said he was going to do. And he sent him the Holy Spirit to dwell in them. And now we got the Holy Spirit indwelling in us. All because of Jesus. And because of that, we've been born again. And we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So when you didn't, so was you, so when you was living in that unforgiveness. You didn't have Jesus. But now that you're living in forgiveness, now you got Jesus. So now you can forgive others. I mean, really forgive others. Not the verbal forgiveness like the world do. I forgive you, but they're still hating on you and disliking you and still mad at you and still angry with you. Not that forgiveness. I'm talking about God's forgiveness. Now you don't have that bitterness. Now you don't have that anger because you really forgave them from the heart. From the heart. You really released them from your heart because you released that bitterness out of you. Therefore, if you can truthfully release them, it's not just that I forgive you because when you really forgive someone, you don't have anger or bitterness toward that person or hatred toward that person no more. That's what you got to understand. You don't have that no more. So you always fellowship with God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God's Word. The Holy Spirit will develop a forgiving heart in you. Do you believe that? Do you believe the Holy Spirit will develop a forgiving heart in you? I do. Not only do I do. I know that He will develop a forgiving heart in you. I know. How I know? Because he done it to me. Now, you that don't know, I want you to start believing that the Holy Spirit can do it for you too. It works by faith. It works by faith. 
You got to have faith that God will work in your life through the power of his Holy Spirit that now dwells in you that so that you can truthfully be a forgiving person. A full hearted forgiving person. Not as the world forgive, but as God forgive. So you can forgive like God forgive. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. You want to be able to forgive like God forgive. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. See, if you allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. But this don't work. But this don't work if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. See, that's why you got to be forgiving. That's why you forget it. That's why you gotta forgive others. It's 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 good for you. It's a release for you. And it's also a release to them. But mainly it's a release to you and it's a release to them. And the main thing is you're doing God's will because you're seeking you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Do you understand? When you're doing God's will, you seeking the kingdom of God first in his righteousness. In his righteousness. The Holy Spirit is the kingdom of God that's working in you. That's the kingdom of God. See, the kingdom of God is at hand by the Spirit right now that dwells in you. And it's working in you. In his righteousness. And his righteousness is to be able to forgive others. His righteousness is to be able to forgive others. And his righteousness is to be able to forgive others. Now, do you forgive others? Not as the world forgive and still hold grudges and things and bad and still gossip and backbite about them behind their back and lie on them and all these other things, but you forgave them, right? No. You did like the world, but when you forgive like God forgive, you don't hold no bitterness against them. You don't steal from them. You don't take from them. All you do is love them cherish them. You see, you learn how to get over that anger. You learn how to get over that frustration by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's work on forgiving. I mean, it's, it's, it's a detrimental thing that we all must work on forgiving. That we all must work on forgiving. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. But do it the way that God wants you to do it. To do it the way that God wants you to do it. You must believe you have the power of the Holy Spirit working in you. You must believe that you have the power of the Holy Spirit working in you. Hey, do you know that you got the power of the Holy Spirit working in you? If you're officially believe, a, 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 a freshly believer, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is working with you. That the Holy Spirit is in you. So you have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. But you got to believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Some people don't even understand the power of the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because they haven't been taught. Because they haven't been taught about the power of the Holy Spirit. They haven't been taught about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. They, they Some places teach all around that. They don't want you to know about the Holy Spirit. And then when somebody tell you about the Holy Spirit, it sounds so strange to you and so lost because they've never been taught. I want you to know something. You're not, on, you're not down here on this journey alone by yourself on your own self-will to pleasing God and doing God's will. God loved us so much, he gave us a helper. Through his son, Jesus Christ, to get us through. But you got to trust in the power of the Holy Spirit to be forgiving, to be a true forgiver, to be a true forgiver. See, the Holy Spirit is your comforter, helper. John 14, 16. John 14, 16. Just want to read it to you. And I will pray the Father, but really what he's saying there, and I will ask the Father, and he should give you another, a comforter, that 
that he may abide with you forever. That he may get abide with you forever. You understand what I'm saying? That he may abide with you forever. That means the Holy Spirit is going to be with you forever, not temporarily. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. You got the Holy Spirit in you. And if you got the Holy Spirit in you, I want you to know that you can be forgiving. I want you to know that you can forgive others. I want you to know you can do it from your heart now because you have a new heart in Christ Jesus. You have a new heart in Christ Jesus because of the Holy Spirit in you. Claim your new heart. Don't, 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 don't let your old heart don't, uh, don't try to think like your old heart. Think like your new heart. Let your new heart rule your mind now. Let your new heart remove, uh, uh, move, uh, uh. let your new heart give you the desires of God. Let your new heart do the will of God. Bless the wonderful name, Jesus. He said, I send you a comforter, the Holy Spirit. But then in 26 it says, 14, 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Now, that's the part I want you to know. The comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Oh, look at that. It said the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said. And he's telling the disciple that what he ever taught him to bring back to his memories. And I want you to know, it do the same thing with the word of God. Whatever you learn from the word of God, it'll bring it right back to your remembrance when you need it. So, you know, be forgiving. Work on being forgiven. Through the help of the Spirit. See, God is high on forgiving. God is high on forgiving. That's what this verse means to me. I'm finna to tell you to. Matthew 6, 14, 15. <coughs> for if you, but for if ye forgive man their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. God is high. He said, if you forgive people their trespasses, he said he will forgive you your trespasses. Some people are like, don't hear the verse. But thanks be to God that he developed you so that you can forgive others their trespasses. See, God developed you so you can forgive others their trespasses through the power of the Holy Spirit. The verse 15 says, but if ye forgive not man their trespasses, neither will the Father, your Father, forgive you your trespasses. That is a deep saying. God will not forgive your trespasses if you don't forgive others their trespasses. So that means God is high on forgiveness. And if God is high on forgiveness, God give you the power to forgive others. Once you are saved and a believer in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit have empowered you, I want you to know that it's God that make it possible for you to forgive others. Oh, bless that name, Jesus. I want you to know you're not doing it by yourself. I want you to know you're doing it by the faith, the confidence, the trust, the commitment, and belief that you have in God that you can have a forgiving heart. So God develops a, a, a forgiving heart in you so that you can forgive others. Because he high on forgiving. Because he high on forgiving. He wants you to forgive others. And not only do he want us to forgive others, he give us the comforter, the helper, the Holy Spirit. So it can help us Forgive others. Bless that name, Jesus. If it wasn't for you, Jesus, we'd be doomed. But I thank you, Jesus, that we're not. So you can forgive others. Don't walk around telling yourself, I can't forgive others. That's a stronghold. <laughs> Don't walk around talking about what I can't do. Because you should be able to say, I can forgive others. Because I can do all things through strength through Christ who strengthened me. Because 
I have the Holy Spirit inside of me, empowering me and cleaning me up. And this word just washing me up and cleaning me up so that I can get rid of that messed up heart. And now that I have a new heart in Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of God's word, today I can forgive for others. No, today I will forgive others. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. I'm not going to think about if I can forgive others. I'm not going to say I can't forgive others. I know that I can forgive others. And I know I will forgive others. Because I know I'm not doing it by myself. I know I got God working with me to forgive others. So today I can forgive others. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Sometimes you might get mad. And you might even get a little angry. You might get a little frustrated. You might get a little upset. And you might do something something and you might say something and you might even have to go ask somebody fucking get me or the person might say something to you that make you mad and that made you frustrated that made you angry and now you got to sit back and you got to say God help me so that I can forgive this person because I know that you want me to forgive them and I want to forgive them from my heart but I need you to clean this bitterness up out of my mind right now because it's not in my heart it's in my thinking process I need you to clean this grudge up that's inside of me right now it's not in my heart it's on the surface of my mind but it's trying to make its way down to my heart God but I don't want it there God so God help me with the power of your Holy Spirit and God comes start working in you. He start putting the Spirit to work in you. That Spirit start killing that bitterness, that frustration, that anger. It just start killing all of that up out of you. And the next thing you know, you a new person. And you walk over to that person and you say, for the wrong you have done for me. The way you have mistreated me. I want you to know that I forgive you. That I forgive you. That I forgive you. You do it with the help of the Holy Spirit, though. You do it with the help of the Holy Spirit. You don't do it by yourself. Then he goes on to continue to forgive. Matthew 18, 21 through 22. He said, Then Peter, then came Peter unto him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? That means do wrong against me, mistreat me, trespass against me, and I forgive him. Till seven times. So Peter said, Only so only should give him for like seven times, is that enough? He said, Seven times, is that enough? Then he goes on, Jesus said unto him, I say unto you, on, on to thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Seventy times seven. So that means to continue to forgive him. The number is 490, but really he means to continue to forgive him. He means, oh, bless that wonderful name, Jesus. And you know, when you got to continually forgive somebody, ooh, that's that name, you know that you cannot stand on your own and do it. You got to get in the presence of God. You got to stay in the presence of God so that you can forgive others because it's God that's working with you. You're not who you used to be anymore. You got to remember this. That's probably why I say it so often. But you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And he have given you a new heart. In your heart, you can be forgiven. And when it's get tight and it get hard and it seems like you can't do it, he gave you a comforter. He gave you a helper, the Holy Spirit, to strengthen you and to empower you and to straighten out your thinking so that you can forgive others. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Ain't it, ain't it a marvelous thing to have a God that takes care of us? It's a God that keeps us saved. It's not us that keep us saved. I want you to know, can neither one of us 
keep nobody saved. We can't even keep ourselves saved. You can't even keep yourself saved. So you can't continue to forgive nobody without the help of God. But like I teach trying to tell you, Jesus and God is your deliverer. They deliver us from everything. Everybody looking for other things, but right now, he, he the one that delivered you so that you can forgive others. He the one that made it so it came to your mind to even work on forgiving others. And not only do he tell you to do it, he give you the strength to do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. So you got to continue to forgive. Then it said, then it said, forgive like God forgave. Forgive like God forgave. Go me to Ephesians 4.32. Ephesians 4.32 And it says right here Let 4.32 And be ye kind one to another He said be kind one to another Tender hearted This is the part I want to do right here Forgiving one another Forgiving one another he said, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. See, God has forgiven us because of Christ. Because of what Christ did. And now he's saying that we should be forgiving one another. He said that we should be forgiving one another. Because we know there's going to be time that we're going to have to forgive one another. So we got to have a forgiving heart. And we know that only forgiving heart only comes through God. But you got to forgive one another in the name of Jesus. You got to forgive one another. Christ forgave you. Therefore, forgive others as followers and believers in Jesus Christ. Christ forgave us. And since Christ forgave us, we should be forgiving others as well. So, today, be forgiven. Tomorrow, be forgiven. The rest of, the rest of your life, be forgiven. Because that's one of God's, because that's something that God wants us to do. And then the good part about it, he know that we can't do it on our own. So he sent us the Holy Spirit to help us so that we can forgive others. So, you know, you got to go in prayer. You got to go in meditation. You got to, you know, you got to fellowship with God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God's Word. You got to fellowship with them. You got to have a relationship with them. You got to hang out with them. You understand? So that you can work on forgiving others. So that you can work on forgiving others. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I hope this message touch you. I hope this message bless you. May God continue to bless you always and forever. I hope to be with you. I, I hope to have a message for you next week. God's willing, I'll be here. But first, I, before I go, I want you to know that God's love you and that I love you. As you know, I'm on YouTube under Thomas Patterson. Feel free to, feel free to share this video on your page. Feel free to share it. And my, and you know I'm on YouTube under Thomas Patterson and I do do some tweeting. Feel free. May God continue to bless you and I hope to pass a word to you next week if God is willing.